Hi, my name is Dr. Rana Higgins, and welcome to our weekly video series on innovations in general surgery here at the Medical College of Wisconsin Department of Surgery. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Andrew Kastenmeier, who is one of our faculty surgeons here at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Dr. Kastenmeier is born and raised in Wisconsin, went out west for the rest of his training in his surgery residency at the University of Utah, then he did his minimally invasive surgery and endoscopic fellowship in Portland, Oregon. He then decided to come back here to Wisconsin and has been a faculty surgeon here at the Medical College of Wisconsin for the past six years. He is currently the fellowship program director for our minimally invasive general surgery fellowship. And um, today he's joining us and he's going to be talking to us about achalasia. Welcome, Dr. Kastemeyer. Thanks, Dr. Higgins. So why don't you tell everyone what is achalasia exactly and how is it diagnosed? Sure. Achalasia is a disease of the esophagus. The esophagus is a tube that basically carries the food down through the chest and into the stomach. In achalasia, this tube doesn't squeeze very well. It doesn't push the food down. And at the bottom of the esophagus is a small valve and in achalasia, that valve won't open. When that happens, the food just sits in the esophagus. Oftentimes, the patient's presenting symptoms will be regurgitation of food, chest pain, and heartburn. A lot of times, it's misdiagnosed as reflux, and they get treated for years with anti-reflux therapy without any improvement. So how exactly is it diagnosed? You said oftentimes it's misdiagnosed, and people will think maybe this person just has reflux. So how, how does one go about getting a diagnosis of achalasia? That's right. So it's often misdiagnosed. So to get the diagnosis correct, usually there's two studies involved. The initial one is when we get something called an upper GI, where the patient has to swallow some contrast and we shoot x-rays as it goes down. A lot of times we can see that there's an obstruction within the bottom of the esophagus and that the fluid doesn't go through properly. That generally gives us a good clue that it might be achalasia. To confirm the diagnosis, we do something called high-resolution esophageal manometry. That measures the esophagus ability to uh, contract and for that, the ability of that valve to open and close properly. It can also help us subclassify into different types of achalasia so that we can target the right treatments for their particular type of achalasia. So once someone has a diagnosis of achalasia, what's the next step? Who do they see and, and is there a cure? It's a great question. So unfortunately, there's no cure for achalasia. However, we have a lot of great treatments that can alleviate the wor most worrisome symptoms that the patients have. Uh, some of these treatments offer very short-term relief um, and other treatments offer very long-term relief. Um, we are able to offer all these different types of treatments here at the Medical College of Wisconsin. So usually a patient who's diagnosed with achalasia or who has suspected achalasia will either come through a surgeon or a gastroenterologist here at our facility, undergo the proper testing to confirm the diagnosis, and then we have a discussion about the different treatment options. We'll usually discuss the different risks and benefits of each treatment and the potential for success and durability of success uh, after each of those treatments. So since you're a surgeon, what are some of the surgical options that people have yeah. for achalasia? The surgical treatments are known to be the most durable of mm -hmm. the treatments. So uh, patients generally just have to undergo one operation or procedure and have uh, great results with uh, resolution of their symptoms. The treatments that we offer here are uh, what are called a laparoscopic Heller myotomy, and the other is a peroral endoscopic myotomy, which is a, a much newer, innovative treatment that doesn't involve any incisions on the belly. Hmm. Um, and what are the outcomes? What can people expect after a surgery, either the laparoscopic surgery or the one without incisions? So for uh, both the laparoscopic uh, Heller myotomy as well as the POEM procedure, the results are excellent. Like I said, there's no cure. However, patients, after they've had these procedures, rate their swallowing as normal. Mm. Uh, and so they have near complete resolution of their dysphagia, chest pain, and regurgitation. Um, so the long-term rates with both of those surgical options as well are very good. We have 
uh, around 90% success rate for over five years for both of those procedures. Wow, sounds like great outcomes, especially with the something that can really significantly impact someone's quality of life. That's right. So why should somebody come here to Medical College of Wisconsin for surgery or, or just for evaluation of, of if they suspect that they might have achalasia? The Medical College of Wisconsin is one of the few institutions that offers all the available uh, treatment options. We have gastroenterologists who do an excellent job at doing dilation, which is a shorter term uh, solution, but our our gastroenterologists have great experience with that. We also offer all of the surgical options, meaning both the Heller myotomy as well as the POEM procedure. The POEM is only offered at several centers around the nation and the Medical College of Wisconsin is one of them. So it gives patients at least another option when they're thinking about what type of uh, procedure may suit them best. Additionally, uh, I have great confidence in our ability to do a proper diagnostic um, workup for each patient. Our, uh, our manometry lab is excellent here and I know that we can get uh, the appropriate subtype of mm -hmm. achalasia diagnosed so that we can target the right treatment for each patient. That's great. Well, sounds like, um, you know, if you had any advice to give any patients who might be concerned that they might have this diagnosis, what would you tell them? I would tell them Make sure and ask your doctor about the possibility of achalasia and uh, it, a screening test for achalasia is very, very easy to do, an upper GI to see if there's any possibility of that. And then after that, I would seek treatment at a tertiary care center where they do a lot of this. One, because they're really good at diagnosing it, like we are here at MCW, and they're very good at treating it because they can offer all the different options that are available. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Kastemeyer. Thanks, Dr. Higgins. Thank you for joining us for this week's video session, and we'll see you next week.